Hi everyone, uh, good morning and welcome to the Cancer Council. My name is Todd Harper, CEO of Cancer Council Victoria and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today for uh, this particularly important forum. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. Uh, I'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to the Parliamentary Secretary for Health, also the Parliamentary Secretary for Carers and Volunteers, Gabrielle Williams. Welcome today. We look forward to hearing from you shortly. Uh, also to our panellists that we'll be hearing from, uh, Lucy Vesey, Lanny Burke, Melissa Tinney, and also to acknowledge our moderator, Stephen Bendel. Um, today is part of a, a commitment to that this, this organisation, the Cancer Council, has to what we can be doing at um, all levels to reduce the impact of obesity on our, on our communities, and particularly the focus that we can be having on a, a, an enormous challenge in the area of, uh, of sugary drinks. And we're delighted to be a founding partner of the uh, of Rethink, working with other organisations to really change the way that we approach some of these challenging health problems. Um, today, you will um, also hear from uh, shortly from Jane Martin with, from the BCD Co Policy Coalition, who will provide some of the context for us on the, the critical role, uh, the leading role that is available for local governments to champion the health of their communities through some of the initiatives associated with sugary drinks. We'll then hear from uh, Gabrielle Williams who will open today's forum, followed by a uh, panel discussion which will be uh, moderated by Stephen. We'll also then hear from um, uh, a, a YMCA with a presentation who will be identifying some of the ways that they have been able to provide leadership in this uh, in this area, and we're delighted that the YMCA continues to be such a, uh, a strong and leading voice in this important issue. And then, most importantly, at the end of the day, there will be the opportunity for some networking and discussions with a, a lunch and uh, and trade display that we hope you will stay around for. So at that point, I'm going to now hand over to Jane Martin from the Obesity Policy Coalition to set the scene for today's discussion. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Todd. And um, how great to see a, a room full of people who are all interested in what they can do and what their communities can do to make the healthy choice the easy choice. So we are, we've really come a, a, a long way. Um, and I'm going to talk about what kind of support that we can offer you in developing your municipal public health plans and some of the really fantastic resources um, that we have around this issue which we, as Todd said, very committed to and that we've been working on um, for quite some time. So the um, Obesity Policy Coalition advocates for policy and regulatory reform. Um, we're very interested in attacks on sugary drinks, so we're working at, at that level uh, to make change. I see it as a nudge, uh, increasing the price and availability and promotion are two other um, areas where, where we can influence the choices that people make. And why are we interested in sugary drinks? Well, we're all well aware um, that sugary drinks pose problems for our health. The Australian Review of Australian Dietary Guidelines showed that the evidence is that it causes, sugary drinks cause overweight and obesity in adults and in children. Uh, and they have really serious health impacts as well. Uh, so they develop, uh, people who drink sugary drinks are much more at risk of developing chronic disease, type two diabetes, heart disease, and some cancers. Um, and this is a really nice infographic that Rethink Sugary Drink have developed um, and there's more materials uh, outside around the health issues um, around um, consuming these products. And sugary drinks are very highly consumed in our society. 47% of children consume sugary drinks every day. Australians bought, bought 1.28 litres of sugary drinks in 2014. That's only from supermarkets. So that doesn't, that's not post mix, that's not, not what they're buying in pubs. That's just, that's not what's being sold to children through um, KFC and McDonald's with the Happy Meals. That's just what is being bought at supermarkets. And consuming a can, around a can of soft drink a day, increases your risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 22%. 
and the highest consumers of sugary drinks are people on low income, adolescent boys in particular, and young people and including young children. So very young children um, are consuming a lot of sugary drink and that's, that's a real issue particularly for their dental health and it gets them used to that sweet taste um, and that's a real uh, problem. So if you introduce controls on sugary drinks, that's going to impact the people who are already at very high risk of developing chronic diseases um, and really make an impact. So um, it, it can help um, you know, really help those communities and those families who are suffering the most from diet-related diseases. And what do we know about sugary drinks? Well, this is an advertisement developed by Live Lighter, um, and it will outline the health impacts of sugary drinks. Sports drink, fruit drink, energy drink, or soft drink. The sugar in any sugary drink is sugar your body doesn't need, so it gets turned into fat including toxic fat, which can lead to cancer, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. Breaking a sugary drinks habit won't just reduce fat around your waist, it will reduce toxic fat around your vital organs. So this is an ad that ran in the Victorian community last year through the Live Lighter campaign, and the partners are there on the screen. And now that's a campaign that was taken into the Cancer Council, and, it, and it's run um, in partnership with the Heart Foundation and Ali, who manages the campaign, is here today. And we think people know about the health impacts of sugary drinks, um, but this education campaign was incredibly powerful. So we did an evaluation where we had South Australia as the intervention, uh, the control straight, and we looked at the impact in Victoria. <coughs> and the impact was very powerful. So what we found was, for people who um, are frequent <coughs> sugary drink consumers, the number of people, the proportion of people reduced from 31% to 22%. And there was no change in the control state, South Australia. So this is really powerful. It shows how when you can personalise the potential impacts of sugary drinks, when you can get that information out into the community, that they respond. So the community is ready for these messages, they understand it, and they behave in a way that you would expect. So that's an, an incredibly powerful campaign. It's incredibly powerful education, but the kinds of settings-based work that councils and others have influence over can also support people to be healthier and to reduce their sugary drink consumption. So this uh, talks about, yes, it's very simple, it's energy in and ed energy out down there at the bottom, um, and we'd all love people to eat better and do more physical activity, but understanding that people are living in a much broader environment which is impacting on how they behave and this top um, left-hand corner, communities, workplaces, healthcare, schools, childcare, and homes, these are really important settings, and councils have a lot of influence um, around those, those settings. And we have a lot of uh, resources that I'll talk about in a minute, how to help those settings um, improve diets and, and encourage physical activity, um, and thereby help change behavior. So, what, what, what is happening at the moment is, for the individual, the environmental um, gradient is very, very steep. People are pushing against all other kinds of things. Look at the promotion of um, sugary drinks through the AFL, for example. It's wallpaper in our children's lives. It, 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 they're being uh, um, you know, persuaded through digital marketing. They're being persuaded through pricing. They're being persuaded through availability of these sugary drinks, for example. And they're pushing up against this very, very steep gradient. And what we need to do is make the environment, environmental gradient less steep. So to make the healthy choice the easy choice for people. Uh, and that's the kind of resources and um, changes that uh, around what's available in swimming pools and, and recreation settings, for example, that helps reduce that environmental gradient. And sugary drinks, there's lots and lots of organisations working around initiatives to reduce sugary drinks, for example, around Australia. And this is um, some work by Tara Bolson Robertson at Deakin University and Anna Peters Group, where she mapped who was doing what around sugary drink reduction and improving diets, but this is particularly around sugary drinks. And you can see that there's quite a lot of action happening already, and we'll hear from our panel in particular about the different approaches that they're taking in, in their communities. And reducing sugary drinks links clearly back to the state 
Victorian public health and wellbeing plan. It's a key element uh, of that plan. So there's an act action area specifically on reducing sugary drink consumption. So we have the state framework that we can link into uh, as part of um, addressing this problem. And then, so it says, reduce the, the measure is reducing the proportion of adults, adolescents and children who consume sugar sweetened beverages daily. So there you are, there's the plan, there's the measure. And we have a number of policies in place within the state government that guide that work. Um, and so we've got evidence-based, consistent approaches, resources to use, and the healthy choices, um, policies, uh, the relevant versions for councils are workplaces, sport and rec, and parks. And we have someone here from Parks Victoria, so thank you very much for coming today. Um, and the, they're the same guidelines in each, but the, the settings are very, the, the um, guidelines are specific to the um, settings. Um, and Parks Victoria said that they're very happy to work with councils on their actions, and we also are very pleased to have Veronica Graham here, State Public Health Nutritionist, who's very much been involved in developing these guidelines and implementing them, um, and so she's also here too, so thanks for coming, Veronica. Um, we also have a network of support through Rethink Sugary Drink, and Todd mentioned that we have a number of partners, I'll talk about them in a, in a minute, but we have a fantastic section for professionals and that has a lot of really useful data. For example, it has consumption data. It's very clear about what the definitions are, how do you define a sugary drink. Um, uh, it has position statements. Um, it has a lot of materials that you can build your uh, plan around. And it also has some really fantastic case studies um, there as well. So it's a, and it has the latest evidence um, the latest reviews, it's a really brilliant um, resource. So don't start again, go there first, um, and you'll, I'm sure you'll find what you need. If you don't find it, let us know, um, and we'll work on it. And we have a number of um, members, including the Australian Dental Association, Dental Health Services Victoria, uh, Stroke, Nutrition Australia, who are outside with their stand. So some really, really fantastic partners who are all giving a consistent message um, and supporting that uh, Rethink initiative. We also uh, have Live Lighter resources and they're really useful in gaining internal and external um, support and raising community awareness. So, you know, where councils and, and other um, settings are changing, this is how you can support um, your communities to make change. So there's meal planners for families, there's healthy lunchbox tips, there's lots of fantastic tailored advice for people to go to and use and that you can use in your communities to um, support a, a, broad, a broad approach and, a, and uh, changes in the home. So um, it's a fantastic resource. And uh, we have uh, the Healthy Eating Advisory Service have a stand outside, Nutrition Australia um, run that. And there's a lot of fantastic resources there. So there's online training for council staff who want to be trained in how to implement healthy choices. There's a brand new food checker, which was launched last week, apparently it's a soft launch, but organisations can assess the food supplies in their vending, supplied in their cafes, um, and ensure that they um, meet the government guidelines. And, and it makes suggestions around other choices that you can put in your vending machines or make available uh, that um, you know, are green rather than red. Um, and you can check um, you know, for better options. We also have the Achievement Program, and part of the Achievement Program, which is promoting um, healthy environments in a range of settings, early childhood schools and workplaces. Um, one of the outcomes is around healthy eating and physical activity. Um, and this is one of the benchmarks that you can start to meet within your community. Um, and we have, um, there's a, a stand outside as well um, about that work. And um, you know that's something that's available for everybody to sign up to um, and for those settings to make change. And there's local statistics available. So importantly, there's oral health profiles. These have just been updated in 2016 um, for councils um, looking at a number of um, indicators, but it includes sugary drink data as well. And of course, oral health is very, very important. And we have the fantastic Victorian po Population Health Survey which is run every year and then a deep dive every three years. And again, that has data 
on overweight and obesity, but also on sugary drink consumption. So you've got all the material at your fingertips. It's, it's all there. It's fantastic. And just to give you some examples of some targets. So if you wanted to develop some targets, um, increasing healthy eating um, and active living, um, you could reduce sugary drink consumption compared to 2015, a target for 2021, which is really important. And if neighbouring um, LGAs could adopt the same targets, then that creates a bit more of a community for change. So you don't have a different target to the LGA next door. Um, and then, it re and this relates back to the actions in the um, Victorian Public Health and Wellbeing Plan. Um, and you can relate the targets back to healthy eating or to oral health. And this is an oral health example. So increase oral health, again, reduce sugary drink consumption. And then you could have an, a, um, a target around early childhood settings and schools participating in the achievement program, for example. And then if you wanted to look at leisure and sporting facilities, um, you could have council noted sport and rec centres meeting healthy choices guidelines by 2021. So you can have some really meaningful outcomes um, and we've got the um, <coughs> measures are in place and we've got the resources to um, help you to get there. So just finally, I'd like to finish <coughs> with um, another ad from Rethink Sugary Drink. Um, this is one we developed with the Victorian Aboriginal Controlled Health Organisations and I think you'll understand what it's about. Oh, oh no. How did that happen? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Down the bottom. Down the bottom. Oh, there. Yeah. There it is. I saw it. I'm Jethro Kalmahol, and I'm a proud Kangaroo man from South Darwin in the Northern Territory. My name's Keith Morgan. I'm a proud Gunnar Kerno man from Bairnsdale, East Gippsland. My name's Sean Thomas and uh, from Cape Ray Island in the Bay Strait. Hi, I'm Michaela Egan, and I'm Jakara Egan, and we're good to Chimara Money Money Women. We grew up on that chili chili in the Jura. Sports drinks, well, the ads say that they're designed to rehydrate you, but there's just too much sugar in them. I think sports drinks are very well marketed, and a lot of young people are falling into thinking that we need them. There's just too much sugar in sports drinks. I've had a lot of experience drinking a lot of sugary drinks and it hasn't paid out with my uh, performance as an athlete. I used to drink sports drinks before every game of footy and you know, until I actually realised that it wasn't really benefiting me in any way, so I just made the switch to water. Like Matthew said, they're just full of sugar. I don't feel rehydrated after I drink it. Water's really cheap and accessible. I think water's just a good choice because it's a natural product, it's untouched. Mm -hmm. I completely rate you know, drinking water. It helps with my performance, I help my muscles and my internals. I choose water because Mother Nature is designed effectively for our bodies, so why mess with it? The Aboriginal people have been drinking it for thousands of years and you know, I want to be able to set a good example for my daughter as well. Oh, sports drinks are just giving them. It's too much sugar in them. Oh, you don't need them. Uh, water is always a healthy alternative. So that's fantastic. So the hashtag drink water you mob, that's where that came from, that, that campaign. So thank you very much.